Hey, hey, party people. I'm Rachel Rogers, and you are watching Rachel Rogers TV. And I am so excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about trademark registration, which is one of my absolute favorite topics. It also happens to be one of the most important pieces of your business. I'm also excited because yesterday we launched Ready Name Fire, our new guide on naming and trademarking. But more on that later. First, let's start with a story. A couple of days ago, in one of the Facebook groups I'm a member of, there was a business owner who owns a keepsake gift company. And she was asking how she can go about protecting her intellectual property. Now, she had already taken the time to register the copyright for all of the uh, content that is within her keepsake gifts that she's created. There's like original poems and things like that that she's registered the copyright for. However, she had recently learned that the owner of a little store that she sells her products in was thinking about creating competing products. So she was planning on taking the same concept and idea of these keepsake gifts and creating her own version of it. And so the business owner was asking, what can she do to make sure that all of her intellectual property is protected um, so that she can do her best to protect her work from this potential competitor? Now, while this business owner had registered her copyrights, what she hadn't done was protected her brand. Now, her brand is one of the most important aspects of her business. It's why people choose her rather than one of her competitors. It is the heart and soul of your business, and it tells people why you do what you do, what you stand for, and who you are. So it's incredibly important, and you definitely want to take steps to protect your brand from other competitors, because when people are shopping around, going to different websites and looking for your partic a particular product or service, you want your brand to stand out, and you don't want to have competitors who have a very similar brand, so similar that your customers can't tell the difference between their brand and yours. But before you can register your trademark, you have to have a trademarkable name. Now, there are multiple elements that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office will look at to determine whether your brand name is trademarkable. Before we dive into these various elements, you should know that a trademarkable name is also going to have the characteristics of a remarkable name. Okay, so remarkable is always good for business. So trademarkable, remarkable, you want all the ables. There are five classifications to look at on the spectrum of distinctiveness, and here's a little handy dandy um, illustration so you can see what we're talking about. So the five classifications to look at are generic, descriptive, suggestive, arbitrary, and fanciful. And as you can see, the sweet spot is in between suggestive and arbitrary. A name that is purely generic and or descriptive is very difficult to register, and in most cases you're shit out of luck and won't be able to register it at all. Plus, these names tend to be very generic and descriptive, meaning they're not remarkable, right? So they're not going to win you any business because they're not going to be exciting and attract customers. Suggestive, arbitrary, or fanciful names, however, do tend to fall in both the remarkable and trademarkable categories. So that's a winner for you. So here's what they mean. Suggestive marks suggest a certain quality or characteristic uh, onto the goods um, or service without actually describing it blatantly. So think chicken of the sea for tuna fish or Netscape for computer software. Arbitrary names refer to real words but used in an unrelated way to their meaning. So the uh, most obvious example of this is apple for computers. Um, if the word apple was used for an apple orchard that would be a descriptive mark but when used in relation to computers it becomes an arbitrary mark. Fanciful marks have no prior meaning, so essentially they are completely made up words. So Google is a completely made up word and would be a fanciful mark. Exxon is too. One of the disadvantages of fanciful marks is that it takes a very large marketing budget to explain to your customers what this word means and to give this mark context, whereas a real word um, already has context and people understand the meaning. So that is one of the disadvantages of fanciful. For most small businesses, the sweet spot is somewhere between suggestive and arbitrary names. Okay, so that allows your name to be distinctive enough that it is registrable and it's also remarkable, but it's not so distinctive that it's actually fanciful and then takes a very large marketing budget and is hard for your customers to remember. So those are the five different types 
of trademarkable names that you can use for your business products or services. If you want to dig deeper on naming and trademarkability, which is not a real word, but it's one I use anyway. <laughs> if you want to dig deeper, you can check out our new product that I mentioned earlier um, in this video, which is Ready Name Fire. Ready Name Fire is full of practical advice for coming up with a great name for your business products and services from both the branding and creative perspective and also the legal perspective because one without the other is just plain silly. So that's all I have for you today, folks. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Rachel Rogers TV. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. And if you never want to miss an episode of Rachel Rogers TV, just use the subscriber box below to subscribe. It's like DVR. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.